A heckler in Iowa greeted Mitt Romney with shouts of liar during his speech today. Apparently, Mr. Romney's history of serial falsehoods is catching up with him. As a great British statesman once said, there are lies, damn lies, and then there's Mitt Romney. It would appear that no lie is too brazen, no charge is too fatuous, provided that it propels him toward the White House. Back with us now are Julian Epstein, Professor Michael Eric Dyson and Steve Kornacki. Steve, uh, another day, another falsehood from the mouth of the great man. This time he's saying that the president sabotaged the U.S. economic recovery in order to pass health care reform. Take a listen. The idea that they knowingly slowed down our recovery in order to put in place Obamacare, which they wanted and they considered historic, but the American people did not want or consider historic, is something which I think deserves a lot of explaining. Now, Mitt Romney was referencing something from a book he claims to have read by the author Noam Scheiber. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. But are we now entering the field of complete make-believe and conspiracy theory as far as Romney's concerned? You know, it, this, it's hard to say this is anything but that, because if you get into the details of this, obviously that is not what the book said. The book did not say that the Obama team was told, if you pass health care reform, you're going to sink the economy. The argument that the book got into was over priorities, and it was basically, look at the economic situation you're inheriting, you're walking into in 2009. Right. Do you want to focus entirely on jobs and on the economy, or do you want to do the stimulus and then move on to health care? So it's a question of, you know, if we maybe had not put health care as such a high priority, maybe the Obama administration then could have done more... I mean, that's what the book gets into, that debate. Most of the people around Obama, though, will say no. Obviously, there was no direct connection between the economy right. and health care. And certainly the question of priorities, it, it, that's a debatable point, but that's not even the point Romney's okay, trying to so make. Okay, so he's here, a conspiracy right? theorist. Um, let, <laughs> let, let's, uh, Mitt Romney, let, uh, let's see what Noam Scheiber's book actually says. Let's take, take a listen to Mr. Scheiber himself. I found no evidence of this. I, I found I encountered no administration official who felt that way. Um, they all uh, thought this was a good thing to do. <laughs> it was in the long-term interest of the economy. Professor Dyson, so here's the author saying <laughs> that's absolutely not true. What is Mitt Romney reading? I mean, tea leaves and certainly not Disraeli. So what's interesting, <laughs> and your beautiful uh, interpolation of Disraeli was brilliant, but I think the fact is that, again, this is a, a presidential candidate who's willing to prevaricate, who's willing to tell an untruth to satisfy his particularly immediate need here. As Brother Steve said, as Brother Noam said there, that's not my point. My point, you can argue about priorities. The Obama administration felt that they addressed the millions of Americans who were without health care, that if they were put off the the dole, so to speak, and back on good standing, then they would able, be able to be healthier and therefore stimulate the economy. There's a logic to that. You can disagree with that logic, but don't outright lie and tell an untruth about what the Obama team intended to do. This is why uh, people have raised questions about his, you know, his veracity and his ability to stand up and tell the truth. And I think, as you said, lies, lies, and more lies. Yeah. Julian, the issue of Romney's military service, or lack thereof, keeps coming up. He said many different things about this over the years, as you know. But for statements like, just take a listen to this. I introduced three members of our veterans team that were there from the Second World War, uh, one of whom in particular, I recall, he, uh, he was a lookout on the USS Tennessee on the day of D-Day, excuse me, on that day of Pearl Harbor. And, uh, and he said he looked into the eyes of a pilot flying an aircraft carrying armament that would come attack his ship. He was injured in the attack at Pearl Harbor. He went on, however, to serve for 33 years in the United States Navy. And I had him stand and receive applause. From now, Julian, of course that gentleman deserves every honor. Of course he deserves to be lauded. My father was in the Royal Navy for 27 years. But there is something... I just can't get my head around this, Julian. This man who lies about his own refusal to serve and then every single place he appears panders towards the military. I mean, explain that to me. Well, it, he's, he's, he is pandering and he is serving up uh, some good fodder for Democrats in, uh, in the fall. I mean, remember what happened to John Kerry. Uh, this is, this is, there's actually some substance here for Democrats to go after him on this. And just to return to the point for a second, if I can, on uh, the tanking of the economy to get health care passed, 
What Mitt Romney is, you know, Mitt Romney argues that he understands economics. What he is arguing by misinterpreting the book is that a president has some secret lever to either increase the economic performance or decrease the economic performance at will. If the president has that, query why isn't President Obama using more of that right now? But it's a theory that no economist, no economist believes is true. Uh, and so he's making that up out of thin air. And you're just left with the conclusion that Mitt Romney is spending far too much time with Donald Trump on the grassy knoll. Uh, <laughs> it's just, this is just bizarre. Just final question to you, Professor Dyson. Can America really consider electing a man who lies so openly so often? I don't think so. I mean, he's serving all right, but he's serving up lies, he's serving up dis untruth, and he's serving up manipulation of the facts for the purposes of his own narrow ideological perspective, and I think that doesn't serve the American people well. Indeed. Professor Michael Eric Dyson, Steve Kornacki, Julian, thanks so much.